I built this landing page for my imaginary burger SaaS in just 30 minutes. It looks professional. It's got a bunch of different sections and it's got this form where interested prospects can put in their email address and LinkedIn URL and then it'll send them an AI generated personalized welcome email. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I did this using lovable.dev and N8N. And this is all possible even if you have no idea how to code. Welcome back to Tommy Codes. Let's get into the video. I will mention that I AI generated 100% of the ad copy on the site. And of course, a SaaS for burger executives is kind of a stupid idea. So the point of this video is not to teach you guys how to build an offer, how to build a landing page and how to actually attract clients. It's how to take your ad copy, your offer and convert it into a landing page quickly. So that's what the video is about. If you need tutorials on how to write ad copy, look somewhere else. Okay, with that out of the way, let's actually take a look at the anatomy of this site. And what we've got here is a very straightforward landing page. It's a single page. Yes, it has sections at the top, but each of the sections just links you to a different part on the page. And we've got FAQ, we've got some kind of calls to action, very basic landing page stuff. The most interesting part of the page is gonna definitely be this form. And the way that this form works is you're gonna put in your email address, you're gonna put in your LinkedIn URL, and that is gonna trigger an N8N workflow that's gonna handle all of the processing logic. Let's start in N8N because that's the more important part of this process. If we get the N8N workflow working properly, we should be able to one shot this entire app. So here's the entire N8N workflow. It's just four steps. Let's walk through all of them at a high level and then we'll dive in. First, we're gonna scrape the LinkedIn profile using a platform called Appify. Then we are gonna convert the LinkedIn profile into something that's AI friendly to read. Then we're gonna send it over to AI and have it write the email and the subject line. And then we're gonna fire off an email using the Gmail node here. Let's start at the beginning. The first thing we need is the LinkedIn profile. And this workflow here, it has two inputs. We're gonna have email address and LinkedIn URL. And you're right, that, those are the exact inputs that are coming from our form. Once we grab the inputs, we are gonna hit Appify. So Appify is a web scraping platform. I've gone over it in another one of my videos, but basically what it allows you to do is scrape structured data from websites. And the one I'm using here is the mass LinkedIn profile scraper with email, no cookies. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to this Appify actor you're gonna paste in the LinkedIn URL of the profile you're trying to scrape. So this is my profile here. You're gonna hit start and that is gonna trigger an Appify run. And this is gonna go and actually extract all of the data for you. We'll wait for a second for this to finish. And this is gonna put the data in the output and we get it in this nice little table output here. So you can see, yeah, I'm a software engineer. There's the URL. And you can see the full output in this JSON object. And basically everything that you would see on my profile, so my whole work experience, all of that stuff, is going to be present in this JSON object. Now you honestly could copy and paste this guy and put it directly into ChatGPT and it might be able to figure out what's going on, but it's usually easier for ChatGPT to handle text, not even JSON. And what I mean by that is we wanna convert this nasty JSON object into something that's very concise for ChatGPT. So I'll show you a little bit more of this workflow over here. Let's run the extract profile markdown step and I'll explain how I generated this. Don't worry, you're not gonna need to know how to code. We're gonna go down all the way to the bottom and we see this profile markdown. So Markdown is just a format for text files that's a little more rich than just plain text. So you have these, so you have these hashtags and these other asterisks. These are gonna format the text in bold, uh, add different sections, very straightforward stuff. But basically what I want this code to do is take this JSON object and convert it into this nice Markdown format for me. And honestly, the code is pretty nasty. But the good news is I didn't even write this myself. I had AI generate this code and that's what we're gonna show you guys how to do. So what you need to do to AI generate this code is we need to think about what are the inputs and what is the desired output. So what are the inputs? Luckily, we can just look on the left-hand side of this node and we have the entire input. It's this JSON object. And you literally don't even need to look at the different fields of the JSON object. You can just copy the object and then you're gonna put it into a ChatGPT prompt like this. And I would recommend using O3, which is the best at coding and logic. This is gonna really increase the chances that it can one-shot the code, which is what we wanna do. We, won't have to, we don't have to deal with debugging this as much as possible. And here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna say, I need your help writing the code for an N8N code node. It's important that you let the AI know that you're writing the code in the context of N8N. That's gonna make it much more likely to be able to get this correct. Crucially, we're gonna tell it, what does the input look like? Now we could say, hey, there's a field called LinkedIn URL and there's a field called full name, but honestly, we might as well just copy and paste the entire thing because then it can actually see not just what the fields are, but what the values are. So we copy and paste that. And then we're gonna tell it, hey, write the code to output a single markdown string version of the profile and put that in a thing called profile markdown. Now this is kind of vague. We could be more specific about the different sections. Maybe we only want employment history. Maybe we don't want the skills section, but for our purposes, that's completely fine. Then you're gonna enter that and it's gonna think for in this case, 31 seconds. And then it's literally gonna dump the entire body of the code. You can copy that, come over back here and paste that into your N8N code note. 
And this works really anytime you've got kind of a nasty data structure and you want to clean things up, especially when it's difficult to do with the native N and N nodes. Like if you're trying to unroll a list of lists or other complicated things, you can just have AI write some JavaScript for you that'll do it much faster and much more succinctly. And the way, again, the way that you prompt the AI to do this is, what does the input look like? What is the output you want? Tell it you're using N8N and there, there you go. Copy and paste the input and let it, let it do its thing. And then it should just work. So anyway, that's why we're converting it to Markdown. Then we're gonna go over to ChatGPT. And in this case, I'm using GPT 4.1 Nano, which honestly is kind of a dumb model, but for testing, it's fast and it's cheap. If you're writing a real email that you're actually gonna send out to people, I would highly recommend using at least 4.1 Mini, but probably 4.1 or GPT 4.0. Use a better model if you're just gonna be sending people emails. It'll be worth the, the money for sure. And let's take a look at the prompt. So it's kind of a silly prompt. I'm saying you are an assistant at a company that sells SaaS to burger executives. So I know this is kind of a dumb example, but it's gonna illustrate exactly what we need. You will be given a LinkedIn profile in Markdown format. So it's important that we tell the AI what it's going to expect. And also keep in mind, this is a system prompt. So this is like a high level, we're telling the AI, hey, what are you and what is your purpose for us today? You're gonna to write a personalized welcome email and keep it under 100 words. If you don't tell it to keep it under 100 words, it honestly might write like a novel, which generally people don't want. It might actually go over 100 words. It could be 105, but this is gonna keep it nice and short. And not only that, but write a poem. We want, we want to delight our prospects with some personalized poems that we painstakingly wrote with AI. And we're gonna sign off as Ronald McDonald, the absolute goat of burgers. And then in the system prompt, we also wanna tell the AI what we want the output to look like. In our case, because I want the AI to generate both the subject and the body, I'm gonna tell it output in JSON and have subject and body fields. This way we'll be able to take the subject and take the body and put it correctly into the Gmail node in the next step. Then what I'm gonna do is give it an example. And the reason I wanna give it an example is that's gonna make it basically always output in the format that we want. So the example is gonna be a user message where I just copy and paste my LinkedIn profile in Markdown format. And then the output, excuse me, the next message is gonna be the assistant message. So this is like telling ChatGPT, hey, this is how you responded before. And I'm gonna give it the JSON format that I'm expecting. So the content of this email is not that good, but you'll notice this is exactly how I want the output. Then we're going to put in the actual profile. So that's what you're going to drag in from the left-hand side here. So we'll scroll all the way down, grab the profile markdown and put it here. And this is going to cause ChatGPT, and we're going to test the step here. This is going to cause ChatGPT to realize that it needs to respond in this JSON format. And that's why we get this perfect JSON for us. So now that we have the email, we just need to put it into the Gmail node. So we're going to go over here and we need to JSON.parse the content because the content is a string and we need to pull out just the subject field and then just this body field. So run json.parse and then grab the subject and then run json.parse and grab the body. Now, honestly, you probably could have put another code node in here and that's technically cleaner, but for our purposes, this is completely fine. Then we're gonna go over here and grab the email address from the original input. So I'll show you guys where I got that. The input has the email address, just dump that right here. And then that will send an email. So if we hit test step, now we're in my email, we can see that we have that exact email that it wrote. And just to show you guys, if we go over here, the input was, hello, Tommy, let's build something delicious. That's what we see here. And then we can see the silly little poem that it wrote me as well in the body. So that's everything you need. Now the last step here with this workflow is we need to expose it to the internet. Right now, this workflow can only run in my NNN cluster. We wanna make it available to people on the internet and that's how Lovable is actually gonna be able to contact our workflow. So let's hit save. Let's go over into this workflow here, which I'm calling the webhook. And a webhook is basically a way for you to expose a workflow to the entire world in N8N. So you're gonna use this webhook trigger. And I like to separate out my workflows. If you watch my video on the do's and don'ts of webhooks in N8N, the logic, this is what I'm calling the business logic. I don't want there to be webhook stuff in here because I think it just complicates things. I like to have all of the webhook logic in its own workflow and then call the welcome email workflow as a sub workflow. And if we look in the welcome email, we're gonna notice that we're gonna fill in those two parameters that we, we saw in the input of the welcome email. So we see email address, LinkedIn URL. We're gonna see email address and LinkedIn URL. And the webhook, what it's gonna do is stand up a URL that we can use. And if we look here, we see this is the URL. So like you would literally go into your browser and then you would put in the query parameters, something like this, excuse me. So I already have it up. You would put email equals Tommy at that's my email and then ampersand and then the LinkedIn URL. 
So this is how you would call the workflow. And you could even hit this in the browser. This isn't going to work because I don't have it open ready to go. But that's how you would do it. We're going to use a get request. You could do a post request. And if, if you're not a programmer, don't really worry about what the difference is. But this will just have to get linked up and lovable. But we're going to use a get request. And for now, we're going to do no authentication, which was a don't from my video on do's and don'ts of webhooks. But we're just testing. It's fine without auth. The other don't I'm doing here is I'm not overriding the path. I'm just doing this random UUID. I would rename this to something like burgers or welcome email. I'm just going to do this quickly because this is going to be quick and dirty for you guys. Anyway, we wire that up. We then connect it to the welcome email and then we can just hit save and, and let it go. So this is all you need to do to set up the back end. And this is the most difficult part of actually vibe coding this app. Now that we have everything set up, now that we know what the data is going to look like, now that we have everything defined, we are going to be able to one shot this entire app. So we're going to go into Lovable and I'll show you guys the prompt that I wrote initially for this. And we're going to regenerate just so you can see how it works. But basically what I'm telling Lovable is create a landing page for a site. So this is going to be a command. That's not a question. I'm telling it what to do. Then in triple back ticks, I have all of the ad copy. So this is what you would actually spend time writing. This is really the important part of a landing page. You, you need to get the copy right or nobody's going to want to sign up for your thing. So spend some time doing this. Don't just AI generate some shit like I did here. I'm putting the ad copy in triple back ticks. And the reason I'm doing this is when you have a prompt, part of the prompt is commands. Do this. I want this. You need to do this. The other part of the prompt is supplementary info. So I'm telling it write a landing page, but I don't want to have it generate all of the text. I brought my own text. And I need to separate out the text that I'm bringing for the landing page from the commands that I'm giving it. And that's why I'm putting this in triple back ticks. That's going to make it more likely to understand that the ad copy is just part of the inputs to the site. Then I'm saying use this color scheme. So I went in a separate window and I asked ChatGPT, what's a good color scheme that's going to follow all of the color theory rules for a burger site? And it came up with these colors. This will restrict Lovable to only use these colors. And I'm not even telling it like, oh, use this for the primary color, use this for the secondary color. But you could do that. Like if you wanted, hey, the, the text box needs to have this color, you can be that specific. I'm just honestly not a designer, guys. And this is going to be completely fine for our use case. So I gave it the colors, I gave it the ad copy. And then I also need to tell it, hey, only do a single page. I don't want to have crazy navigations. I really just want a single page. But if you wanted a more complicated structure, you could definitely let it know and it would usually obey you. And then here's the crucial part. Okay, at the bottom, there's going to be a form. The inputs are going to be email address, and that's why we see email address, and then LinkedIn URL. And notice that these are like human readable. This is how you would actually write it to somebody in an email. Okay, so that's the form inputs. And I'm saying they're both required. That's why you see this red asterisk. And if I don't fill this in, it's going to say, hey, you got to fill this out. That's coming from Lovable because I told it it was required. Okay, when the user submits a form, make a get request to this URL. And that's going to be the URL from your webhook nodes. So you're going to go over here and hit production URL and copy that. And then remember when we said get instead of post? Well, it, de it, it depends on what you select here. But because I selected get, that's why I'm saying get here. Again, it doesn't matter which one you pick, but they have to link up. Otherwise, it's not going to work. It has to be get in both places or post in both places. And then I'm saying use lowercase e email and then LinkedIn URL lowercase with an underscore for the query parameters. And again, the query parameters are these things here. So Lovable, when you submit the form, it's basically going to make a request to this URL and it's going to put what you put in for email here and what you put in for LinkedIn URL here. So I'm telling it exactly how it needs to construct this data. And then it's just going to send over the data. So I already generated this site. Let's do another one. So we're going to copy and paste this. We are going to uh, go back to the dashboard and we're going to generate this. So I just copied and pasted this into a new app. And let's let Lovable do its thing. I honestly, I don't know what it's going to look like. I imagine it's going to look pretty similar, but I will edit this part out. It'll be done in a second. All right, it's still generating. It's been a few minutes. Hopefully it finishes up soon. This is still a lot faster than it would be if I had to write all the code myself and it's going to look a lot better. So this is also, as an aside, this is the worst part about vibe coding is I'm out of the flow state and I have to basically just sit here and scroll through social media on my phone or, or kill some time because it's only going to take like five minutes. It's not really enough time to go do some other crap. So I kind of just have to sit here and wait and feel like an idiot. That's really the bad thing about vibe coding right now. And separately, as a prediction, I think once AI gets fast enough to do this and keep you in the flow state, it's going to become so much more enjoyable. Okay, anyway, so here's the site. It, de it definitely looks different than the original. So the original site, you know, it had this structure. It's got this little nice fade in, fade out thing. And this, this new site, uh, a little more, what's the letter I'm looking for? Like, I don't know. Well, you, got, you guys think of a good word, but this is what the site looks like. Let's see how it did on the form. So let's put in my email and then let's put in my URL. We're going to paste that in, submit. 
Okay, we got a success and then let's check my email in a second. All right, so that actually didn't work. I looked at my email and it didn't send me a message. So we're gonna do a little live debugging. So we're gonna go into both of these workflows. We're gonna go into executions. And if we look here, I can see that the input came in and it only had the email address. So it looks like what happened is Lovable was not able to properly send the LinkedIn URL. And let's view the parent. Let's take a look at what was sent to the get request. We have... Aha, okay, so here's the error. I misspelled LinkedIn URL in the prompt. So if we go over back to the prompt, where are we? Yes, I misspelled LinkedIn URL. I did L-N-K-E-D-I-N. So we have two options. One, I could have Lovable we'll rename this, but honestly, I don't wanna wait for it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do something a little cheeky, you could say. We're gonna go to the original workflow and we are gonna change this from LinkedIn. We are gonna add in the typo and then this should actually work. So let's go copy to editor. Yeah, unpin, that's fine. Go over here. And this is going to be LinkedIn. Let's actually copy it from this. So we're going to copy this guy. And we're going to change the name of the parameter. Hit save. And then save. And then now we're going to retry this. So let's put in my email. And then let's grab my LinkedIn URL. Live debugging for you guys. This is, wow, what a video. Okay, now we got success. Let's check in on my email. All right, and here's the email. It finally worked. So that's the full landing page. There are some issues. First of all, we're stuck in the lovable world. We could publish this, but you'll notice we'll get this kind of weird lovable URL. So if you actually wanted to host this on your domain, that's where it takes a little bit more work. Or if you wanted to grab the code and make some changes to yourself, that's totally possible. I'm going to talk about that in a future video, but for now, hope you guys have a good day. If you're interested in more N8N topics, take a look at this video up here. Thank you.